Hello, I'm Magnus. It's been a while since I recorded the video, but today it's time again. So I am going to talk about the uh, row versioning in SQL Server using something called temporal tables or system versioning of tables. Uh, and the use case we're going to look at is a price list. Uh, and we want to be able to record not only the current price, but the changes to prices in the price list. So let's jump directly over to Management Studio and have a look at how we can get some support from uh, SQL Server. So the business case I'm going to show is a price list, which is very simplified, but good enough for a demo. So I have a product ID and a list price. And what I want to do is not only store the current price for each product, but I also want to know the changes to, to these prices. And this is, I mean, it's of course a requirement that we have had since the beginning of databases or even software development. We want to keep track of changes and keep kind of an audit trail. And we have implemented different patterns for it. One very common one is to just add uh, the end date or even the start date and the end date to the table and then store multiple versions of the same row or the same product ID in this table. Or create a history table. And uh, in the main table, it, it may look just like this, no changes. And then in the history table, we have a, a date or when the, when the row ceased to exist, or even when it started to exist. But the thing is, we had to do all the work ourselves. We had to have a stored procedure for updating, one stored procedure for deleting rows, and so on. Uh, and it had to uh, open a transaction, uh, and so on. With SQL Server 2016, we got support for system versioning to implement temporal patterns. So we kind of got that automatic. So you get the archiving and everything as an atomic operation, which is very nice. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to create a table, which is system versioned. In later uh, videos, I'm going to show how to take an existing table and make it system versioned. Uh, and also talk about some performance considerations. But let's start with the just the basic functionality, create a table which has automatic system versioning. So to do that, we need to not only have the product ID and the list price, we also need a row start and the row end indicator. So let's add two columns, row start, you can name it anything, I'm going to use row start as, as the name for this column. Uh, it has to be a date time two column. It cannot be null. And we have to decorate it with generated always as row start. And then we create kind of a cuss into this one. Uh, row end. And we need to add more information. We need to tell SQL Server which two columns are used for uh, for the versioning. So period for system time is going to be row start and row end. I have some reds. Why? SQL Server or Management Studio didn't like my not nulls. Okay, I think they're they're okay to keep there, um, but we're not going to update this row anyway, so we don't need it to be not null because we can't update these rows ourselves or these columns. So now we have the foundation for system versioning. SQL Server knows what will be the row start what would be the row end. It knows that the period for system time is these two rows, row start and row end. And now we just add a need to actually 
activate the system versioning. So we do that in the with clause. With system versioning equals on. Now, if I leave it at this, I will get a history table, which is automatically named, and it's going to have a name that it's kind of hard to guess because it will be suffixed by the object ID of the table that we're versioning. So I'm also going to add the history table equals dbo dot price list history. So that I have a decent name and then I can query the history table directly if I want to. So let's execute and now we have a price list table with a history table. So let's have a look in our database. We have the tables, we have the price list table, and we have the history table. And uh, let's just look at what Management Studio shows us. It shows us the main table price list. It has a clock icon. And Management Studio tells us that it's a system version table. Underneath it in the Object Explorer, we have the history table. So price list history and Object Explorer also shows us that it is a history table. Very good. How do we use it then? Well, let's add some rows. Insert dbo.pricelist. And I'm going to insert product ID and list price. And remember, I told you that um, these two, we're not going to touch them. Uh, we can even decorate them with hidden as a keyword. And if we do, a select star against this tab table will not even show these two columns. But I'm going to keep them. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter. But if you are implementing system versioning for an existing table for an existing system, that might be useful because it, if the application does some silly stuff like select star from the table, you don't want to suddenly get two more columns to the result set because that might break the application. And then the hidden keyword is very good to, uh, to hide them from the result set. They will, of course, still be there and you can still query them by name. But it's just a select star that doesn't show them. Anyway, uh, let's insert into price list and I'm going to insert into product ID one and give it a price of 10. I need to have the values clause, of course. So I can now select star from DBO dot price list. And we get a result set. Which looks like this product ID one list price 10. And we automatically get the row start, which is right now. But if I look at my clock in Windows, it will say that the time is 928. So this is going to be the UTC time. I'm on Central European time. So this is UTC time always. And then the row end is going to be the year 9999. So that means this row is still valid. If I now update the row, update price list set list price equals 11 where product ID equals one. I can still query the price list table. And indeed, the new list price is 11. And the row start is 829. What SQL Server has done is not actually an update. Well, it, it might have done that as the actual operation, but logically what SQL Server has done is to move this row, the row with the list price equals 10 to the history table and then insert a new row with list price equals 11. So let's have a look in the, uh, in the history table. 
select star from dbo.price list history. And here we have the previous version of the row with list price 10. And here the row end is not going to be the year 99.99. It's going to be exactly the time when I updated the price. So basically, it took the old start time for the for the old price, and then just set the end time for it to when I updated it. So now I have an audit trail of my updates, which is very nice for loading a data warehouse, for example, uh, then you can implement your slowly changing dimensions using this row start and row end information. One last thing. If I want to know what the price was at a specific point in time, we can do that. So select star from price list for system time as of, and then I'm going to add a specific date in time. So what was the price at 829? It was 10. What's the price? What was the price at 830? It was 11. So using this, you can query this table for price uh, and even query the history table because what SQL Server really is going to do, SQL Server is going to look in both the current table and the history table and just find uh, which row, if any, uh, has this value between row start and row end. And this is really useful information. Uh, and, and we can use it both for the data warehouse scenario, but also for, let's say we change a price and then a product that is already delivered, when we create the invoice, we have to look up the list price and, and maybe calculate some uh, some discounts and so on. But we need to have the list price for every uh, point in time. And using the for system time as of, we get support for that. That's all I had in terms of demos. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can take an existing table with data in it and implement system versioning for it. And then in some upcoming videos, I'm going to show you some performance considerations when using temporal tables, how you should, uh, what you need to think about when indexing the main table and the history table, um, and also some more advanced T-SQL uh, for querying for periods, for changes, and so on. Uh, but thanks for watching. If you liked this video and you want to see more, then please subscribe to this channel. See you.